Today is the feast of Saint Francis of Assisi, founder of the Franciscan Order, the patron saint of ecologists and merchants. Francis, born at Assisi in Umbria in 1181. When Francis was born, his father Pietro was on a trip to France. When returned far from being excited, he was furious to know his mother had baptized him Giovanni after John the Baptist. Pietro never wanted his son to be a man of God, but he wanted him to be a businessman, a cloth merchant like he was, and he especially wanted a son who would reflect his fascination with France. So he renamed his son Francesco, which was equal to call him French man. Francis enjoyed a very rich, easy life growing up because of his father's wealth and the liberalism of the times. From the world, from the beginning, everyone loved Francis. He was constantly happy, charming and a born leader. If he was picky, people excused him. If he was ill, people took care of him. If he did poorly in school, no one minded. In many ways, he was too easy to like for his own good. No one tried to control him or teach him. This resulted that Francis became the leader of a crowd of young people who spent their nights in wild parties. He attracted to himself a whole followers of young people addicted to evil and accustomed to vice. Francis himself said later, I lived in sin during that time. Francis also fulfilled every hope of his father. Francis wanted more wealth and not holiness. He wanted to be a noble, a knight, and wanted to win the glory and prestige in a battlefield. Most of the troops from Assisi were butchered in the fight. Francis, being a wealthy and able to ransom, was taken a prisoner and was chained in harsh, dark dungeon. After a year in the dungeon, he was ransomed. This made no impact on him. All that he expected from life was glory. He went to fourth crusade with armor decorated with gold and wearing a magnificent cloak. After not even a day's ride, he had a dream in which God told him he had it all wrong and told him to return home. He returned home to be humiliated, laughed at, was called a coward by the village and he faced the fury of his father. Francis' conversion did not happen overnight. God had waited for him for 25 years. Francis started to spend more time in prayer. He went off to a cave and wept for his sins. Sometimes God's grace overwhelmed him with joy. But life couldn't just stop for God because there was a business to run and customers to wait on. One day, while riding through the countryside, Francis, the man who loved beauty and who hated deformity, came face to face with a leper. Prevented by the appearance and the smell of the leper, Francis nevertheless jumped down from his hose and kissed the hand of the leper. When his kiss of peace was returned, Francis was filled with joy. As he rode off, he turned around for a last wave and saw that the leper had disappeared. He always looked upon it as a test from God that he had passed. His search for conversion 
led him to the ancient church at St. Damiano. While he was praying, there he heard Christ on the crucifix speak to him. Francis, repair my church. Francis assumed this meant the crumbling building of the church he was in. Acting again in his impulsive way, he took a fabric from his father's shop and sold it to get money to repair the church. His father saw this is an act of theft. Francis was considered by his father more like a madman than his son. Pietro dragged Francis before the bishop and in front of the whole town demanded that Francis return the money and renounce all rights as heir. The bishop was very kind to Francis. He told him to return the money and said God would provide. Francis heard what he needed to hear. He not only gave back the money but stripped off his clothes in front of the crowd that had gathered and said, Pietro Bernadone is no longer my father. From now on, I can say with complete freedom, Our Father who art in heaven. Wearing nothing but cast off rags, he went off into the freezing woods singing. From then on, Francis had nothing but everything. He realized then it was not the church of stone he was called to build, but to build the universal church, which had scandal and avarice working from within, while outside heresies were flourishing. Soon Francis started to preach. Slowly, companions came to Francis, people who wanted to follow his life of sleeping in the open, begging for garbage, to eat and loving God. With companions, Francis was in need of some kind of direction to this life. So he opened the Bible in three places. He read the command to the rich young man to sell all his goods and give to the poor. The order to the apostles to take nothing on their journey and the demand to take up the cross daily. Here is our rule, Francis said, as simple and as seemingly impossible as that. He was going to do what no one thought possible anymore, live by the gospel. Francis took these commands so literally that he made one brother run after the thief who stole his hood and offer him his robe. Francis practiced true equality by showing honor, respect and love to every person, whether they were beggar or a pope. Francis' brotherhood included all of God's creation. He really felt that nature, all God's creations were part of his brotherhood. The sparrow was as much as his brother as the Pope. In one famous story, Francis preached to hundreds of birds about being thankful to God for their wonderful clothes, for their independence, and for God's care. The story tells us the birds stood still as he walked among him, only flying off when he said they could leave. Another famous story involves a wolf that had been eating human beings. Francis intervened when the town wanted to kill the wolf and talked to the wolf never to kill again. The wolf became a pet of the townspeople who made sure that he always had plenty to eat. Following the gospel literally, Francis had his companions went out to preach two by two. At first, listeners rejected these men in racks, thinking they were mad. 
but they gradually noticed that these barefoot beggars wearing sacks seemed filled with constant joy people wondered how it could be possible when they realized their greatness soon those who had met them with mud and rocks greeted them with bells and smiles francis did not try to abolish poverty he tried to make it holy he told the friars to treat coins as if they were pebbles on the road when francis wanted approval for his brotherhood he went straight to rome to see pope innocent iii you can imagine what the pope thought when this beggar approached him as a matter of fact he threw francis out but when he had a dream that this tiny man in rags held up the tilting lateran basilica he quickly called francis back and gave him permission to preach years passed and the numbers of preachers increased however francis did find persecution and martyrdom of a kind among his own brothers his dream of radical poverty was too harsh people said he finally gave up authority in his order without being upset about it now he was just another brother as he always wanted francis final years were filled with suffering as well as humiliation praying to share in christ's passion he had in a vision received the stigmata the marks of the nails and the lands owned that christ suffered in his own body years of poverty and wandering had made francis ill when he began to go blind the pope ordered that eyes be operated on this meant meant cauterize his face with a hot iron francis spoke to brother fire brother fire the most high has made you strong and beautiful and useful be polite to me now in this hour for i have always loved you and temper your heat so that i can endure it and francis reported that brother fire had been so kind that he felt nothing at all how did francis respond to blindness and suffering that was when he wrote his beautiful canticle of the sun that expresses his brotherhood with creation in praising god francis never recovered from this illness he died on october 4th 1226 at the age of 45